Hey guys, and welcome to Gunsmith, the game where you become an international arms dealer. From a humble beginning with an empty factory, you will grow to become not just a manufacturing giant, but an international arms dealing empire. Now, when I first sat down to play this game, to be honest, I really wasn't expecting that much. The, the, the trailer is kind of underwhelming, and it gives you no real idea of the, the depth and the scope of this game, and the level of wondrous complexity and puzzle solving. This game is an absolute gem, right? I, I can't believe that the, the game hasn't become uh, like more widely popularized. It's, um, this is like an undiscovered gem. It really is a diamond in the rough. It's currently in early access. It costs uh, 15, 15 pounds in the UK, uh, $19.99 in the US. And it's so good that I actually got onto the developers and asked them if they'd uh, let me sell the game in my game store. Uh, to which they agreed. So you can now go and buy this game in my game store. And I'll just mention that as with all the games on my game store, these are 100% official Steam keys obtained direct from the developer or the publisher. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all of the features and mechanics that make this game so great, you're gonna to wanna to try it for yourself. The game's been in early access for about a year, but they've constantly been adding more and more functionality to flesh out the game. Uh, recently, they just added uh, globalization, where you can now have multiple factories in multiple countries around the world. Starting a new game will give you a whole bunch of options. You can choose difficulty, and you've got a bunch of uh, scenarios with different targets to aim for, including, if we go to the bottom, a sandbox mode. So you start off with an empty factory. Well, pretty much empty. You do have a few machines which are just enough to get you started with uh, one production line, producing the one item that you can manufacture right at the start, which is a type of uh, camouflage glove. The game features a very solid tutorial. Step by step, it'll introduce you to all the basics that you need to know. For example, the cookbook, which contains all the recipes for all the things you're gonna be able to make in the game. Inside this panel, we can find the exact layout of the production line that manufactures camo gloves. Most of it is on the factory floor, but we will need a few more things. Now, at first sight, the recipes seem to be, um, like there's plenty to them. I mean, just to create gloves, you've got to go through all of these processing steps. Uh, and each one of these requires a different machine. But it's all pretty straightforward, right? Well, <laughs> uh, later on, I will show you why there is so much depth to this game, because it's not as simple as it at first looks. The game features a commodities market where you can buy and sell the various materials that you're going to need um, in your manufacturing processes. So like fabrics and plastics and metals and chemicals and stuff. And one of the things that uh, worries me about always about these kinds of manufacturing production type games is how much micromanagement is there going to be? How many of the, how many really repetitive tasks that are going to kind of grind you down and make the game a bit boring and tedious? Well, good news with this game. I think pretty much everything that I've run into that I thought, oh my God, this is getting a bit tedious, there is a, an automation. So for example, with the market, there are automation rules that you can set to buy replacement resources when um, based on all kinds of criteria. For example, because the market goes up and down, you may only want to buy resources when you are A, short of resources, or when the price is very low. And you can add multiple levels of rules uh, to be very, very clever about how you buy and sell within the market. One little bit of micromanagement that I thought that I wasn't gonna like in the game, but it turns out that I do like in the game, is spillage. So if you have a, a production line that's malfunctioning for, like, for whatever reason, and it's... Um, it's not processing things correctly and it's throwing stuff on the floor and whatever, then you have to deal with it, right? And it's a good motivation for coming up with lines that work properly. Um, and there's kind of no shortcuts to be taken there. So I like that because that increases the challenge without any really tedious micromanagement. Basically you use this Hoover tool and you Hoover it up and it's automatically returned to your inventory. The game takes you through the individual machines and shows you 
how they work, how to place them, uh, how they all fit together. And I think it gives you just the right level of information to get you started. It doesn't go too deep into it so that it either gets boring or that it gives away too many secrets that you want to learn when you start actually building production lines for yourself. Each production line is going to start with a dispenser or a set of dispensers which are going to output particular resources which will be then fed through various manufacturing processes uh, till you end up with your final product. And I found that I picked up the, the, the different machines and what they were for and how to use them and how to set them up like really quickly. It's a very intuitive UI, I found. And I like the way that different materials are treated in different ways. So, for example, plastic has to be preheated before it's sent into a plastic, uh, a plastic former. Uh, fabrics have to be stitched after they've been cut by the cutting machine. At the beginning of the game, you've only got one product that you can manufacture, which is these camouflage gloves. But, and, and I thought, you know what, this is going to be kind of boring manufacturing clothing and stuff. Um, like, I want to get to the guns and the ammunition and, uh, oh, and by the way, the stuff that you can make in this game. Okay, you've got all kinds of, uh, like, combat equipment, gloves, boots, uh, trousers, vests, uh, backpacks. Uh, then you've got all of the different types of ammunition. You've got all kinds of pistols that you can manufacture, rifles, uh, and then it goes on. You've got, um, you can manufacture chemicals, you can manufacture explosives, you can manufacture landmines, you can go on to vehicles. How about armoured cars, tanks, airplanes? Oh my god, yeah. But what I found was constructing the individual production lines is like, is fascinating and i kind of like I, I started playing and i thought i'm just gonna have a little play around uh, and kind of fi find out about the game S literally seven hours later i was like oh my god is it what what the hell time is it oh my god i'm addicted now i'm totally addicted to this game now but i found that i was in no hurry to get onto the guns and ammunition i was more obsessed with trying to create the most efficient production line that I possibly could. And we'll talk more about why that's a very complex thing in a minute. Each production line or, or group of machines is controlled by uh, a line control station. And this, I, again, I thought this might be... You know how hiring staff can be a real pain in some games. But in this game, it's really, really simple. You put in a station and you hire somebody and it's that simple. Now you do have to keep them happy and there's some stuff that we can uh, to do to keep them happy. Uh, but other than that, you don't have to worry about it. There are no, it, there's no kind of like going through lists of people with varying stats and deciding which one you're gonna hire. There's none of that. It's nice and simple. It gives you the functionality, but doesn't create a micromanagement nightmare. Oh, and here comes that guy right now. Once you've put the station in and you've hired somebody, then you can add the various machines on the line to that control group. And then once that's all done, you can power the entire line or that particular group of machines on or off as a group. Now, at the moment, boxes of finished goods that come off the production line are automatically teleported onto shelves. And I'm kind of okay with that, but I'm kind of expecting that at some point in the development process, um, that's going to change and there's going to be like, I don't know, forklift trucks going around or, or you'll have to have workers uh, or conveyor belts to actually carry the finished products into, uh, into the storage areas. At least, I hope that's what's going to happen. Now it's time to do some research. This allows you to unlock more machines, improvements to your factory and more items to manufacture and sell. It is the heart that drives your expansion. Okay, so this is the research screen, and I, I think if the game has got a, like a weak point at the moment, then it really is this, because it's, it's confusing. And even the tutorial doesn't like adequately explain this. Basically, the, the start of the tech tree is here, and then you kind of branch off into all of these branches. But there are no tooltips currently on these icons, and some of them are pretty difficult to guess like what they are. But I and, and I was like kind of put off by that initially, but you, you find that once you actually click through a few of these and you start to realize what they are, then suddenly the whole thing becomes kind of self apparent. And literally within a minute or two, you'll be like, yeah, okay, I totally understand that. That's fine. 
the research tree is um, is pretty extensive, and you've got everything from um, unlocking new machines and um, let's see, uh, new conveyor belts. So like the uh, the flow splitter that f splits lines into two, or splits them into three, or allows you to have uh, cross flow. So you've got like you know the, your your conveyor belts crossing each other. You can improve your factory. Uh, in terms of efficiency by researching things like uh, these maintenance cost reductions which uh, go up to like 20 percent and then over here the really fun stuff so for example uh, you can buy um, a, a chemicals you have to research it as well as buying uh, a chemical production license which allows you to make various chemicals this now we're getting to the really fun stuff the bullet production license now in order to get a pu bullet production license you can't just get it and this is what I like about this game, because the, the game forces you to play the game. I, and I love that in games. It's like, there are no easy ways around it. You can't, like, you know, just jump the queue or whatever. You've got to play the game. So this, you need to develop reputation. You buy them the researches with research points. And you have to allocate a certain pr proportion of your budget in order to, to uh, create research points. But even with once you've got the research points, you still have to take time... To do the research so it's something that you you can't just like turn on um your, your research budget just let it just let it accrue loads of research and then just go and click through oh no you've got to stay on top of it you've always got to be queuing up the next research and deciding which branch you're going to go down i love how detailed these uh these these recipes and production lines are and then uh, once we've once we've gone on through uh, all of the things that we uh, we need to manufacture uh, ammunition we can then start manufacturing different types of ammunition and again you've got to research each type of ammunition so this is um, uh, 45 caliber ACP this is uh, 0.22 uh, 5.56 standard NATO uh, round uh, 7.62 and the good old 50 caliber <laughs> uh, and then we've also got explosives up here and then we get into once, once we've got up to like m making kind of decent ammunition we can start to get into pistol production and then finally at the moment there are just um, two rifles in the game um, this is the uh, the ST9 pistol down here and then we've got the MMG SMG and the rifle mark 1 now obviously this is in early access and there's going to be a lot more coming like i said you're going to be able to make everything up to, up, up to and including missiles, tanks and aircraft. Manufacturing stuff is one thing, but also you have to sell it. And if we go over here, we can see um, the orders that clients want to place. Now, there are two types of clients. There are kind of the legit clients, which is like civilian retailers and um, government organizations like the CIA and uh, the MSS. But... There are also kind of black markets that you can also sell in. Obviously, fulfilling orders like uh, like this order for some uh, for some camo gloves, we can accept that order, and then when we've created everything that we need for it, so we, we've got 360 in stock. They're asking for 260. We can complete the order and we get paid for it. Hooray! The game also has a pretty decent uh, help system. Which, uh, which takes you through kind of the key areas that you need to know about. For example, like maintenance, like how to set up uh, the, the, the patrol routes for your mechanics. Now, you can just have them free roaming, right? But it's, it's much more efficient to have specific patrol routes. So you may say, I want, I want my mechanic to be, to be wandering this route. And then when he gets close to any machines that need maintenance, he'll just go and maintain them. So what is it about this game that is so addictive? And it's simple to answer. It's the production lines. It's the optimization of the production lines because oh, they are wonderfully and annoyingly complex. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you for why. Now, this is a factory that I've been working on. Oh, I don't know, like um, 10 or 12 hours I've been putting into here. Now, I've been, I've been doing you, my usual thing of like figuring out like every little mortal thing about this and it's just awesome it's been a really wonderful learning experience i've enjoyed the learning process and that's what and that's what a good game should be all about there's no frustrating micromanagement holding you back so for example 
So in the market, you go to your automation rules and I've got it set up. Now, I've done something fairly simple. So I've set it up so that when it's expensive, we just buy a little bit at a time. When it's cheap, buy loads, right? And that means once you've set up these rules and they can be as complex or as simple as you want, right? Um, then you don't have to worry about it. it. That just happens in the background and you can focus on what's really interesting, which is these production lines. Okay, so why Skype? This all looks like pretty straightforward. You put down machines, right? Uh, like in the order that the cookbook tells you, like for camo gloves, right? You put down the machines in the order, right? And you get it going and then you sell it and you make a profit, right? Uh, no, <laughs> like if you just put down a line like it gives you at, at the beginning, um, you will make virtually no money, right? And it's because you're wasting tons of stuff. Why, why Sky? Please tell us. Okay, well, it's because if you take um, the beginning of this line, okay, uh, we're taking plastic sheets and feeding them into a cutter to cut out fabric, uh, like a fabric glove um, template. Now, this is just an unfinished piece of fabric that then has to be um, fitted with some plastic fittings and sewed and zipped and all kinds of stuff, right? But what you need to look at is the output speed and the crafting speed and what inputs it requires, okay? Now, this crafts... Uh, five gloves right at a time and it takes two seconds but it only outputs right one every uh, uh, half a second okay what that means is that if you set this up right to, to craft an item every two seconds ie you supply the fabric sheet every two seconds right it can't get them all out of the machine it can only get four of every five out of the machine. And you can see that we've now got 1,200 of these fabric gloves sitting inside this machine that it can't output, right? So you have to control the input, right? And if you look at the, the dispenser, the dispenser outputs uh, these plastic, sh uh, these fabric sheets, uh, one every one second. Okay, well, if we're outputting one every one second, this only needs one every two seconds. So if we have it set up like, like the game shows you how to set up the line at the beginning, you're supplying one every second. And what you, what you don't realise, because the game doesn't tell you, is that you're building up a whole load of fabric sheets in here. Now, you can manually, right, um, sort of get around this by using this restock contents button. This sends basically all the stuff that you've got left over, right, back to your inventory. And you can then use it. The problem is that if you'd like take the instance of fabric gloves, well, okay, um, there's no way that you can really introduce those back onto your production line. Okay, so then you think, okay, well, I'll set up another production line where I take plastic fittings that I've got left over because this has got a similar kind of problem. And I'll take my fabric gloves, right? And I'll set up a, like a mini production line that takes those excess partially finished goods and passes them through the whatever processes they need to turn out finished goods. All right, awesome, right? But it, you're, even that is not really good enough. So then you think, well, hang on a second. What about if we go up to the other end of the factory? What about if we break these processes down a little bit? So over here, I've just got dispensers feeding in fabric sheets to make, uh, to make fabric boots, okay? Um, over here, what am I making over here? All oh, right, over here, I'm just making the fabric gloves, okay? And you have to research these recycle bins. That basically returns it automatically to your inventory so that you can use it in something else, okay? So I've got um, this machine over here is just making these little plastic fittings. And then this line is just making the gloves and then I've got another line over here. Uh, no, not over here. Oh, I've got these two lines over here, which are taking the, the fittings and the partially made items, the fittings and the gloves, and turning them into finished products. Right, but deciding like what what is the best way to do it and what's the best way to control it, what's the most efficient, because each of these machines um, has maintenance costs, you need, uh, you need to supply it with utilities, and that's something else you've got to manage, by the way, which is uh, your electricity and gas and water. Each of these machines requires different things. If I, if I use splitters and, and have a line like this, so this is a, 
uh, a machine that you can research, which is the flow splitter, which flits, splits a single flow into two, right? Right. Well, then my mechanics can't get access. So then you start, have to start building like access ladders and stuff. And it just, oh man, it's like a wonderful 3D puzzle game. Um, seriously, you, I think you can tell in my voice, like, it's kind of a very, very joyous experience playing around with this. What's great, though, is that you can get away with, like, doing it, like, kind of very simply, and there are ways around it, but you're rewarded for doing it better. You make better profits, there's less manual intervention. Um, it's kind of awesome. And also, the, um, the orders. Now, when I started off playing, all I had was orders for camo gloves. And then as I started to add other products, I started to get um, orders for uh, the other products, like the compact trousers, but I also started to get combination orders, right? And these combination orders kind of really are the key to balancing your stocks. And that becomes its own game in and of itself. Man, seriously, I, I, I really can't speak highly enough of this game. I've really loved it. And again, you get so obsessed with like putting in a production line. Oh, and by the way, there's no pausing of the game. So you've always got to be on the ball with setting up your research and um, keep an eye on your stock because if your shelves become full, then stuff just gets dumped on the ground. So then it's like, oh my God, I've got to go to my orders. Uh, let's fulfill, let's fulfill this order. Okay, fulfill that. That will create some space on my shelves. And up here it tells me I've now got 42 racks with at least one available spot. So then I can get my hoover and start to put some of this onto the shelves. So again, I love the fact that you're, the game incentivizes you to, to play well, right? And if you, if you mess up and if you do something badly, there's a bit of a penalty, right? And the penalty is obviously profit-wise because you're not being so efficient, but also you're forced to do little bits of micromanagement to, to recover from whatever problem you've caused. Oh man, you know what guys, I think for this video we will leave it there. I am going to do a full Let's Play series on this game because, oh my god, you couldn't tear me away from it at the moment. So um, if you want to see the Let's Play series, make sure you subscribe. And um, if you're interested in picking up the game, go and check it out on my uh, on my official game store. And if you're, if you're really interested, then tonight there is going to be a live stream. Oh yeah, I am going to be playing Gunsmith live from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. UK time, which is what, uh, 8 p.m., 5, that's like 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in, uh, in the States. So there you go, guys. There is a quick introduction to what, seriously, this is a, like a little hidden diamond. If you haven't heard about this game, like check it out. Really, check it out. I can't recommend it highly enough. I've had a ball. Thanks for watching. I really hope you check out the game. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you for the, for the Let's Plays and for the live stream. Peace out.